I'm Nestor, I'm a core developer at Polyrab, and today I want to walk you through one of our grand visions, which is scaling protocol intelligence with Web3 agents. So, imagine a world where users do not directly interact with protocols, but they do so through the usage of AI agents. These AI agents would analyze on-chain and off-chain data, user preferences, they would find and act to new opportunities, they would create and execute and plan for transactions on the user's behalf, and all of that. So essentially, agents would be creating a dramatically easier and more powerful experience for the users of Web3. And this is not only interesting for the end user, this is also interesting for protocols because protocols would need to create and maintain an ecosystem of agents in order to attract and retain users that would otherwise would either not have the time or not have the expertise or not have either of those in order to participate. So mediating protocol participation through the usage of AI agents is something that would allow protocols to broaden their audience from a small group of experts and professionals into an actual mass audience. So all of this sounds good, but where do you start? So how does this look in concrete terms of implementation? So at Polyrep, we believed that one of the first things that we needed to do was build actual agent infrastructure. So how, how, is, how are agents implemented? How does that look? How do they work? And what do they perform best? Why? How? And the best way to do that, in our opinion, was to start building just solid agent foundations first. So we entered the AutoGPT um, arena hacks. Um, and there, all participants were tasked to create generalist agents who would need to perform different tasks across four different categories. S uh, synthesis, research, coding, and data analysis. So why am I telling you this? It's because not only do we need to create um, a generalist agent who would be able to perform different tasks in nature, but also the benchmarks that AutoGPT was using to evaluate agents were very strict on precision and time. So we needed to create agents that would be able to handle different tasks in nature, but also aggressively optimize for time without compromising on the precision of the results. So how does that look like at the technical level? How, how, how do you do that exactly? So First, we started uh, with a multi-agent architecture. If you're familiar with Autogen, or nowadays uh, Crudo AI, uh, you will understand uh, how does that work. For those of you who don't know, it's basically you have a multitude of agent instances, each one with its own persona, which means that it has its own system prompts, its own expertise, and its own set of tools. And through conversation and delegation, they can manage different kinds of tasks together. Uh, and then reach consensus on the results. However, in practice, like actually that kind of architecture, the delegation and the conversation and the consensus part of it all uh, is, was very, very, very time expensive for our use case. So we took it one step further in, te in terms of optimization. And we arrived to this. Um, even in just chameleon architecture. Even Ninja is the name that we assigned our generalist agent, and chameleon architecture is what I'm going to explain to you. So how Even Ninja works is, is that instead of having multiple agents, uh, like you would do with Autogen or with Crew, you have a single agent instance, and you have multiple personas, which are collections of system prompts, tools, expertises, and then for each task that the agent needs to complete, it swaps out the persona in its own single agent instance. So how does Evo work concretely? Uh, if you give it a task, if you give it a goal, what it will do is that we, it will create an execution plan in order to achieve this goal. And then for each one of the tasks, it will, it will first make an informed prediction on what would be the next agent persona that it should load into its brain. Then it does that. Then it contextualizes a chat, which means that that single agent's chat history gets manipulated, and you remove everything that does not pertain to the task at hand, which shows to not only imp improve performance times and contact window optimization, but also reduces the amount of hallucinations that you actually get in practice. 
um, then you execute, and then you iterate again. So over time, on each one of the tasks, it loads a different personality, it executes with that personality specific to that task, rinse and repeat until the task is complete. This architecture uh, proved to work not only very well, it actually uh, won the AutoGPT hackathon, and Ivan Ninja was named best generalist agent by AutoGPT, and currently, if you go to the repo, uh, you will find it as the current best go-to agent. So now that we have achieved this, now that uh, we have built the solid a agent tooling foundations that I've told you about, and that, and that we figured out the nuances, and what works empirically, what works in practice, why, why not, uh, how to optimize, uh, how do we actually bring that into Web3? Like, how do we connect the tools that we have built in order to actually mediate protocol participation so that we can further the vision of scaling uh, protocol intelligence? So we formulated, sorry, we formulated this hypothesis, which is, what if we take what Evo, Evo Ninja was best at, which out of her categories was research, and we take that part specifically we augment it so that it can make uh, forecasting, and we use it in order to participate in prediction markets. And that way, we can make prediction markets one of the first concrete actual use cases that we solve. So, we did. We created Evo Researcher, which is a spin-off of the Evo that you just saw. Um, we built it in collaboration with Gnosis and Olas, and what it does is basically, you give it a question, it needs to be a binary question about a future outcome that has not yet happened, of course, um, and has a fixed time frame. Like for example, will X implement a new misinformation policy before the end of 2024? Um, and then it will search the web, it would gather evidence, it would evaluate the evidence, it will make an, uh, um, an evidence analysis report, and then it will make an informed prediction. Uh, this also worked well, and we recently merged it as a mech tool in the, in the Valor repo. So how does Eva Researcher work? How, how does it look at the technical implementation level? It looks like this. So I'm gonna walk you through the pipeline and how that works. So when you give a question, like the one that I just told you about uh, to Eva Researcher, the first thing that it does is that it generates subqueries. So for the question that I just told you, subqueries could be what is X's current stance on misinformation? Or what are some of X's past misinformation policies that haven't implemented? So then we generate a lot of those subqueries uh, through um, an LLM. We could generate 20, 30. And then we re-rank them and take the top, top three, top five. So then for each one of those subqueries, we search the web, we scrape the information, we sanitize it, we deduplicate it, we aggregate it, and then we chunk all of it. After chunking it, we create embeddings, and then for each one of the subqueries plus the original query that we had at the beginning, we perform a similarity search. Uh, after getting the most relevant information chunks, we inject them into, into a prompt for an LLM so that the LLM generates uh, an evidence analysis report. This is important not only to condense the, the information, but it's also important because the analysis that we ask the LLM to give us contains uh, uh, contrasting of information sources. So the analysis could include, for example, um, this claim is very strong because multiple information sources uh, cite it. Or this information is conflicted because multiple information cite different things. Or uh, this claim is actually very strong and it looks very uh, compelling, but uh, it's very outdated. So that's the kind of information that you get in that evidence analysis report. So it's like a spin-off of the generated knowledge uh, prompt engineering technique. And then finally, uh, we make an informed prediction. So the interesting thing about that last step, about making an informed prediction, uh, is that this prediction uh, needs to come in the form of a numerical score. 
So imagine, for example, uh, zero means uh, this will never happen, and one is this is for sure going to happen. So the problem with that is that your first approach in order to implement this would be to create like a well-engineered prompt in order to get the LLM to evaluate your information, your analysis, and output a score. But the problem is that LLMs contain all sorts of biases, formatting biases, positional biases. So we have been studying different techniques in order to mitigate these biases so that we could get uh, better and more, a more precise and real uh, prediction scores. So among the different techniques that exist for this, uh, you have different ones. You have agents ensemble, uh, but, but the one that we use is called multi-agent debate. Uh, I don't want to bore you with how, how, how that works, um, but in, at a very, very, very high level, you basically have a fixed set of LLMs at the beginning. You ask each one of them the same question, and then on the second round for each one of the LLMs, uh, you tell each of them, hey, um, I know that you already gave an answer to this, but uh, these other agents, they came up with these different conclusions. Could you update your answer so that it includes the information that I'm, I am now giving you from the other agents? So then after two or three rounds, you will get consensus on the multiple agents on a single answer. So we take that single answer and we return it to the user. So, I've talked a lot about how the retrieval works, how the pipeline works, but is this actually real? Like, does this actually work in the way that we expect it to work? Gnosis has been very kind in collaborating with us on creating a, a robust benchmark infrastructure in order to test um, this agent. And assuming that Manifold currently uh, is making correct predictions, um, if Evo Researcher was launched on manifold uh, market questions and it could use real money, it would beat the market. So these benchmarks sh by Gnosis show that Evo Researcher would actually be profitable um, if launched on a prediction market like manifold. And so if we have already proven that you can successfully mediate one of the Web3 uh, protocols, in this case, prediction markets, and that you can improve uh, the user experience and augment the capabilities of what the user can do and gain from protocol participation, what's next? Um, we now formulated a different hypothesis, which was, what if we take evil researchers' research and evaluation capabilities and we leverage them in order to mediate, not prediction markets this time, but resource allocation decisions. So, we did that, and we created Evo Allocator. Evo Allocator is an agent that specialized on evaluating evidence, evaluating information, and designing strategies for resource allocations for users. We we are currently exposing uh, an application that under the hood uses Evo Allocator called FunPublicGoods.ai. So actually in this case, the use case of Web3 that we're trying to mediate is public goods funding. So for this one, we scraped all of the data from Gitcoin, from all of Gitcoin's past rounds. We took all of the project's data, we deduplicated it, we sanitized it, and put it into a single place. Um, and with that, we then enabled this application that uses the agent so that whenever a user goes into the application, they can state or prompt a cause that they want to donate to uh, of public goods. It could be zero knowledge or climate change or refi. It, it could re really be anything. And the agent would in turn search across the project's information, but not only that, uh, it, for each one of the projects that it finds it's good matches, it would then evaluate relevance, it would evaluate impact and funding needed. It would create textual written reports of each one of those and then it would assign a numerical evaluation score for each one of these criteria. After doing that, 
uh, it will then create a resource allocation strategy so that if a user wants to, for example, donate 1,000 USDC to zero knowledge, um, it would look something like this. In this case, the, the cost is EIPs. So here, this is a strategy allocation table where the agent has ranked each one of the projects with a score. If you click on them, you will see a, a more deconstructed um, list of all of the scores that lead to that, which uh, fo follow the criteria of relevance, funding needed, and impact. And then, uh, once you click on connect uh, and state the amount that you want to donate to, it will prepare the transaction for you, and you only have to click. So the agent has, has taken uh, the cognitive task of going through all of the information, evaluating the evidence, uh, getting the strong claims, uh, analyzing how much funding does each project need, is it even relevant to, to, to what the user is asking for, and creating a strategy. So we have already covered two different use cases uh, of um, protocol participation mediation through the usage of agents, but uh, it does not end here. Because um, as the Web3 ecosystem grows and protocols proliferate, we will always have new gaps, new protocols, new ways of participating that could be augmented, mediated by agents. So what's next? In our pipeline, uh, we have already other interesting use cases, like for example, DAO governance, um, NFTs trading, uh, credit evaluations, um, yield optimizations, among others. So we are really very excited uh, to keep building tools in order to further pave the way for this vision of protocols being mediated by agents and that the next billion users of Web3 could actually be agents that operate at the service uh, of users. So thank you very much.